Wow, would you pray with me? Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for that time of praise and worship and just the sweet spirit, Lord, that is felt in this place today. And God, I pray that you would just allow us to continue in that frame of mind of worship and just bring ourselves to you, Lord. Just continue to guide us through this time, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. Wow, huh? Folks, if you're not fired up after that one, your wood must be totally wet. You need, you need some revival, amen? Because if you didn't get revival on that, man, you need to be praying hard, amen? Well, it's time for Children's Church, kindergarten through sixth graders. They are right over here to be ready to take you upstairs and have a great time. And so parents, your kids will be leaving out this west door, but they will be meeting you in the fellowship hall after church, right straight across the hall uh, is where they'll be there for you to pick them up, okay? Today we're going to continue on, and as I shared in the first service, man, I'm, I'm amazed at how God works these things out and the the message and the music all tend to just go together so well. And, and believe it or not, we didn't sit down and pick this out and say, hey, I need that song or we need this message at this song. And man, God just does an amazing thing. And as I, as I shared in the first service, that there's one, one sentence in there that just struck my heart when, when she sang it, and it did again, is that no more games tired of playing games. Folks, can I tell you that what we do here is not a game? What we're doing here today is not a game. What God has called us to do is, is not a game. And I, I really think it's time that the church begin to get connected and we connect to God and then connect to the church because He has given us a mission. He has given us a task. We didn't get saved to do nothing. We got saved to do what he wants us to do, and that is to connect people to Jesus Christ. Today what I want to look at is heeding the call, because God has placed a call on his people. As a matter of fact, God's placed a call on every individual. And that's what we want to look at today is heeding that call. I believe that God is still calling today. I believe God is still in the calling business. He's in the saving business. He's in the surrendering business. What my concern is, is I think that the church has gotten out of that business. I think the people who call themselves Christians have gotten out of that business of responding or heeding the call because God still issues the call. Amen. The call is for all people to be saved. The call is for all people to surrender our lives over to him to, be, to serve. It's not any less of a call today than it was 2,000 years ago. It's not any less of a call today than it was 25 years ago. Reading all the statistics that, that you can and, and, and all the surveys that I've, I've looked at over the last couple of years basically tell us that there are fewer people responding to the call of God than ever before. That there are less people surrendering to ministries committing themselves over to ministries. And, uh, and it kind of concerns me because, again, I believe God hasn't gotten out of the calling business. I think we have, in the church may have gotten so comfortable, so wrapped up in other things that we forget to heed the call that he's given us. So that's what I want to look at today is connecting to the church by heeding the call. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 3. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, we're going to be picking up where basically I shared a few weeks ago during our Mother's Day service, right before our children's dedication, I told you about Hannah and how Hannah had gone to the temple and Eli was the priest and Hannah was there and she so desperately wanted to have a child. And it broke her heart because she wasn't able to bear a child and she was being harassed. And, and, and in the Jewish customs, man, that was not a good thing to be without a child. And, and so she was so heartbroken over it. She went to the temple, if you'll remember, I shared that with you. And, and she got on her knees before God and, man, she prayed so earnestly 
that the priest Eli was there and he watched her and he thought that she was drunk. And he asked her, said, why are you coming in here drunk? And she said, oh, I'm, I'm not. said, I'm, I'm coming, I'm praying so desperately for a child. And I would be willing to turn that child over. I want to I wanted to have a child to, to give back to God. And, and so we know that then a year later she came and, and, and she was pregnant. God answered her prayer. This person we're about to talk about here, Samuel, was that child. And so what happened was, When Samuel was old enough, Hannah brought Samuel to Eli and dedicated him into the temple as as God's servant to work in the temple. So now here we are, these years later, Samuel is a young man and he's been working with the priest Eli for some time. And one night as they were getting ready to go to bed, he was asleep or trying to sleep. Then all of a sudden he heard somebody call his name. Samuel. Samuel got up and he thought it was Eli and he went to Eli and he said, Eli, what do you want? He said, I didn't call your name. He said, go back to sleep. So he went again and he laid back down and and again he heard the word, heard his name Samuel called. So he gets up and he walks back in and again wakes up Eli, uh, wakes up Eli and Eli says, Samuel, I didn't, didn't call you. Go, go back and lay down. Third time he calls, he hears that again. Well, he gets up, he goes in, and he says, Eli, you're calling me. What do you want? Eli finally catches on on the third time. He says, well, here's what's going on. I'm not calling you, but what I want you to do is when, I, when you go back and you lie down, the next time you hear your name being called, I want you to say, here I am, Your servant is listening. Speak to me. And so that's where we pick up here is finding out that he tells him and we see that last call. So I want you to take your Bibles, 1 Samuel chapter 3, and I want to read that last part starting at verse 8. Would you can, if you you can, would you please stand in honor of reading God's word this morning? Starting at verse 8, it says, And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, so he rose and went to Eli and said to him, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy, and therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if, if he, not me, but if he calls you again, then you must say, Speak, Lord, your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down, in his, own, in his own place, now the Lord came and stood and called us as at other times. Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel answered, speak for your servant hears. Father, we come to you today. We thank you for the blessing you've given us, for the opportunity to gather here this morning. And Father, I thank you for the great time of praise and worship that we just experienced. And Lord, I pray that your spirit will continue to settle in on this place Father, that you would speak to us, and that, God, we know that the call is there. We know the call is for individuals to be saved. We know the call is for individuals to serve. And, Lord, we know that the church is called to make a difference, to be used, to reach people for Jesus. And, God, I pray that First Baptist West would heed the call today, that there would be individuals heed the call to service. There would be other individuals who I I believe are here in this congregation or watching on this live stream, Lord, that need you in their lives and they need to be saved. So I pray, God, that your call would go out this morning and that, Lord, we could see lives changed and this church can be changed and this church could be making a difference in Lawton and to the world around us. Father, I pray as always that these words that I'm about to say, they're not going to be my words. Father, I pray they're yours. I pray, Father, that the message I'm about to speak is not my message that I've been put together, but Lord, one that you put for me. And that, Lord, I pray that the response from your people and those who are needing to be saved would be as you want it to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Today, what we're talking about is the call, heeding the call. In the Bible, as I wrote here on the screen, in the Bible, the word call is used most often to refer to two things, God's initiative to bring people to Christ 
for people to be saved. That's his first call. Listen, can I tell you, there's not another call of God on your life today if you have not been saved, his call is for you to come to Jesus. It's not that he wants you to now surrender to something. It's not that he wants you to join the church. It's not that he wants you to get more serious about other things. Your call today is to come to Jesus. Without that call, there is no other call that's necessary for your life because there's no other name given under heaven by which men can be saved except the name of Jesus. So he says that, that the call is for that, for people to come to Christ and to participate in his redemptive work in the world. So what he says now is the call is there. And basically today in this message, I want to look at a twofold call. The first one is a call to salvation. And the second one is a call to serve, connect to the church to serve, to be able to be used of God to transform people's lives. The first one is a call to salvation. My friend, that is the most important call that you'll ever have. And can I tell you, that is a call that is given to all people because the Bible says that all, God's desire that all men be saved. So that call is going out. And I believe that call is going out in our church today. I believe that call is going out in Lawton today. I believe that call is going out in the nation today. I believe that call to salvation is, is going around the world today. And God is in the calling business. He's in the saving business. I'm concerned that people have begun to not listen to that call and not heed that call. But there's a call to salvation. Melvin Mesquite said this, It is important to start our exploration of the calling with the call to follow Jesus. It is a call to restore relationship with God. So that's the key component to have a, relationship, a stored relationship with God and with other people and with the world around us and to participate in his redemptive work in the world. Just what I said a while ago. That's what the call is. And that call is going out for men. That call is going out for women. That call is going out for boys. That call is going out for, for boys and girls all around our nation today. It's going out right here. And as I shared before, I believe with all my heart that God has burdened this, my, my heart with this message that I believe for a reason is there's somebody here today, somebody sitting in this congregation. Now, I'm not prophesying and having that spoken to me from the Lord. I just believe with all my heart somebody may be here today. Somebody's listening to this service on the live stream that needs Jesus in their life. The call is going out. The call is for you to, to, to receive Jesus into your heart. And we, what I want to understand, first and foremost, that call is an outwardly call by the gospel, that we hear the word of God. We, we have it presented to us. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2, 14, to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has called us with his gospel. The gospel is being preached. Man, listen to me. You heard some gospel messages up here in the music. Amen. Because if they weren't gospel messages, we wouldn't be singing them up here. I believe Patrick's heart is that way. My heart is that way. That if we don't believe there's a message in it, we're not going to waste time with it. So you've heard the gospel this morning. The gospel is going out. So there is an outward call for people to come to receive Jesus as their Savior. Then we look and see that it's not only an outwardly called by the gospel, but it's an inwardly called by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God speaking to your heart. Listen, I don't want you to do anything because of me. I don't want you to do anything because of the music. I want you to do it whatever God's spoken to your heart through his Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is an inward call. And what the Holy Spirit does is it comes to convict us. The Bible says in Revelation 22, 17, and the Spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. So that word come is there. The issue, the call is being issued out. Now the response is, folks, come. If you hear the message, if you feel the Spirit speaking to you, then you can't just sit there and ignore it. You can't just let it go and wait for time to be over and get out of here. The Bible says if you hear the message, Come, it's a response. The Holy Spirit speaks to you because that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit convicts us of our sinful state. It's the Holy Spirit that tells you that you're lost and that you need Jesus. It tells you of a need for a Savior. I remember whenever I was 17 years old, hadn't been to church hardly ever. 
And man, I remember being invited, and I remember going to First Baptist of Shelter, Oklahoma, and going into that revival service. I'd been there a couple of nights, and I began to feel some. I began to, to sense that I was a sinner, that I had no hope apart from Jesus Christ. And I began to feel that, and, I, and it wasn't just the preaching. Man, there was something, even when I left the preaching, you know, when I left the first night and I went home, I, I, I felt that there was something moving in me, something telling me I needed something different in my life. And I know now that it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. And then I remember going back on the third night of revival. Brother Buddy kind of spoke the message, and he, he was a chalk artist. Man, he gave a great message with chalk, chalk art. And man, I remember just, just not, I don't even remember what he was drawing, because all I could remember was hearing of my need for a Savior. And that night at Schulter First Baptist Church, man, out on the front row, I remember walking down, giving my life to Jesus. Because he called me, his Holy Spirit was working in me, convicted me of my sin, and showed me of my need. But the, and the Bible tells us in John 16, 8, and when he, the Holy Spirit, has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. My friends, listen to me. I believe the Holy Spirit today is speaking to people about sin, but people are trying to ignore the ideas of sin. He is speaking to us of righteousness because we are to be living a righteous life. He is speaking to us of judgment because can I tell you, my friends, judgment is an important word because without the word judgment, without the idea of judgment, there is no need of salvation. I have told you many, many times before that I believe that the good news is only as good as the bad news is bad. If we don't have any fear of judgment, then why do I need saved? If I don't think there's anything coming that's going to separate me from God, why do I need salvation in the first place? He said it's the Holy Spirit that will come and he will convict you of those three things. He'll convict you of sin, he'll convict you of righteousness, and he will convict you of judgment. My friend, these things are absolutely real. But not only will the Holy Spirit convict us of our sinful state, but he'll also make us aware in us, in us previously an unknown awareness of the spiritual things. In other words, I'll begin to hear and understand what's going on in the church. I may have, I may have sat through two services and not had a clue about what was going on. But then all of a sudden, through the Holy Spirit speaking to my heart, I began to be aware of some spiritual things. I began to not understand the whole idea of the Trinity, not understanding the whole arts of salvation, not understanding all the, the understandings of, of the tribulations and all that stuff, but I began to be aware of my need for something more. I became aware of it. And I began to think about the things of God more and more. But it's an inwardly sign from the Holy Spirit. So the first thing that we do is then we respond to his call. The first thing that I need to do when I become aware of those things is we respond to his call. We respond to him. Because if I don't respond, then it's wasted. The Bible tells us in Romans 10, 9, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. So my friends, listen to me. Just hearing it's not enough. Knowing it's not enough. Being aware of it's not enough. I and you have to respond. We have to call upon the name of the Lord. We have to cry out to be forgiven of our sin. We need to claim Jesus as the Lord of our lives and that he is the Son of God. He is the only way to heaven. We have to do those things. So many people think coming in here, that's good enough. Feeling warm fuzzies, that's good enough. Teaching Bible studies, that's good enough. Doing all of these things, that's good enough. And we come Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and we play this crazy game called church. And my friends, it's not a game. We must respond to the calling of the Holy Spirit. So we see then that we need to understand we're called by Christ to Christ. And you say, now, doesn't that, isn't that right? Don't we, doesn't that, isn't that what happens? So listen, there's a lot of people who don't believe this. There's a lot of people who are living their lives of idea of salvation and not knowing that they've given their life to Christ. Because it's, we are called by Christ to himself. 
Listen to me. We are not called to a cause. I hear all the time the trend today is give people a cause and they'll come. Listen to me. My friends, a cause won't save you. The causes don't save you. As a matter of fact, here's the problem with the cause, is the cause eventually will run out. The reason you do it, if you have a cause to fight for, that fight is sometimes going to be over, and you're left with nothing. So we are not called to a cause. We are called to Jesus. The Bible also talks to us that we're not called to a creed. In other words, we're not called to a doctrine. We're not called to a certain ideology. We are still called to Jesus. There's a lot of people who claim, oh, I'm a Christian because I go to a Southern Baptist church. Folks, that's not true. You're not saved because you come here. You're not saved because you go to another church or another denomination. You're saved by Jesus and Jesus alone. But you're not saved by a cause, you're not saved by a creed, and you're not saved by a religion. We're not called to a religion. We're not called to be religious. I hear people all the time say, oh, I tried religion and it left me cold. I've tried the church and and I got hurt. I tried this and I tried that. My friends, listen, we are not called to a religion because religion will leave you empty. Religion will leave you cold. Religion will leave you hurt. Religion will leave you disappointed. But here I want to tell you something. Jesus Christ never will. Because we are not called to those. We are called to a person. And that person is Jesus. My friends, maybe you're here today. And maybe you're listening today or watching today. And you say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm worn down. My heart is heavy. And my friends, if you're tired and you have that gnawing discontent in your life, if you're tired of the world's lies, if you want hope beyond this life and you want the Spirit to invite you, then the Spirit is calling you to come. If you're tired of living that empty life, you're tired of living that that drug-filled life, you're tired of living that sex-filled life, you're tired of living these lives that are empty and you continually strive for more and more and more. Listen, if you're tired of that today, come to Jesus. He will fill you up. If you drink of his water, the Bible says you'll never thirst again. You'll never hunger again. You will be satisfied. But my friends, I am convinced that there are so many people who call themselves Christian. But they've played the religious game their whole life. And they've never come to Jesus. I believe there's somebody here today. I I feel it. I know that God burdened my heart with this message so desperately. Someone here or somebody watching needs to surrender not to this, not to the stuff. Surrender to Jesus. That, my friend, is the call to salvation. But the second one, very quickly, is a call to service. I want to share this thought with you. To be called by Christ is called to service. To be called by Christ, he didn't save you to do nothing. He didn't save you to just sit around. He didn't save you to just take up space. He saved you for a purpose. He saved you for a calling. He saved you and he saved me to serve. The Bible says in Mark 1.17, Then Jesus said to them, Follow me. Now, listen. He didn't stop there, right? He didn't just say, Hey, follow me. He said, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. In other words, what he's telling them, he says, Follow me because I've got something for you to do. I've got something. I've got some work for you. And that work is to be able to bring people to me. He said, follow me and I'll put you to work. Follow me and don't just go sit down. Follow me and don't just go home and stay in bed. Follow me and don't just sit there like an autolog. He said, follow me and I've got a purpose for you. Now, do I know what that purpose is? I have no idea other than to become fishers of men. I don't know how he's going to do it. He's not going to call all of us to do the same thing. Remember, we talked about that last week. We're not all called to be pastors. We're not all called to be deacons. We're not all called to be uh, Sunday school teachers. We're not all called to be singers. Amen? 
I believe I missed my calling in that somehow, but they, they confirm it every time I try to sing. They let me know, that's not your calling, Pastor. Amen? So we're all called to do something for him. But that's, again, the call. Heeding the call, listening to the call. But also the call of service is to, be, to it is a position ourselves in such a way that we might be effectively involved in the activities of the gospel. The call is allowing ourselves to be positioned. It is a, it is a position ourselves of whatever we do, wherever we go, whatever it is I'm involved in, you are then from there called to be actively involved in the gospel. In other words, if you go to work tomorrow, guess what God is wanting you to do? If you're saved today, you know what your call is for tomorrow? Be effectively pursuing the gospel at work. Show the gospel at work, wherever you are. Well, preacher, I can't stand up and, and share everybody about Jesus. You may not have to, but man, you can show love. You can preach the gospel through your love and through your attention, through, through your sweet spirit. Maybe it's when you, well, school is out, but maybe whenever you go back to school, students, teachers, that's, that's part. God says, I want you to be positioned into a point that you can be actively involved in the gospel. Wherever you go, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink or whatever it is you do, do it to the glory of God. So we are called to glorify God and to honor Him, to position ourselves. Again, whatever we do, wherever we go, be effectively involved in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many of you may have heard the story of Apple computers and the Apple organization and how it started out. Well, there was a man named Steve Jobs, and Steve Jobs was the, the main guy at Apple. And so Steve Jobs had this idea of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a company that could literally make a difference to everyone, and it was having personal computers. And so Steve Jobs had the idea. He says, I know about the product, but I don't know about the business. And so what he did was he, he got this idea. He said, I need to find somebody that can work in this business that will help me get this business going. And so he had on his mind a man named John Scully. Now, John Scully was the CEO of Pepsi-Cola, the whole company. He was over it, man, a very, very prestigious he was paid a lot of money, and he had a lot of power. So he went to this man, and he said, look, I've got this little business over here that I really think could make a difference, and I would really like for you to, to head it up. Well, of course, he said, I'm not leaving Pepsi-Cola. This big established business is going to go on forever to come over to your little rinky-dink, non-hardly existent Apple business. So he turned him down. So Steve Jobs wouldn't give up, man. He kept going back to him, going back to him, going back to him. Finally, he, he went to John Scully, and he presented him with a question. He said, I want to ask you one thing before you turn me down the final time. And this is the question that Steve Jobs asked John Scully. He asked him, said, do you want to spend the rest of your life selling sugared water or do you want a chance to change the world? He said, you can stay doing what you're doing and you'll sell, uh, you'll sell sweetened water all your life. He said, or do you want to take an opportunity and literally change the world? Do you know what he did? He took that challenge. And you know what happened to Apple Computer? It changed the world. It changed how people view technology. And they continually now move forward and move and move and reinvent new things. And so we've got to understand that he had a choice. And finally, John Scully said, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to literally change the world. Can I tell you here today, I want to ask you the same question. My friends, listen to me. If you're here this morning or you're watching this morning, 
you could sit and you could just go along with whatever happens in the church. You can go along for the ride. You can just be here every Sunday and you can do that. But do you want to do that or do you want to surrender over to Jesus and literally change the world? He is calling us as his people to come to that saving, to that relationship with Jesus Christ. And once we do, then he wants us to work to literally change the world. He took 12 men that he called, 11 of them stayed, one went away. Then he called Paul and brought Paul in as an apostle. And those 12 men, listen to me, those 12 men who followed Jesus, who gave their heart over to him, who surrendered everything over to him, when he said, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men, he literally changed the world with those men. We are here today because of those men. My question is, my friends, do we want to be a part of that? Do you want to, as an individual, suffer through your life feeling empty and alone and having no hope? Or do you want to come to Jesus this morning, give your life over to him, and and understand what peace and joy and comfort is all about when you receive Jesus into your life? That you say, here I am, Lord. I surrender my heart to you. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Come into my life and to save me, Lord. I claim Jesus as the Son of God. I claim him as the only way of salvation my friends and when you do that God will take you from that emptiness and that no hope and he will bring you out of that condemnation and bring you into to love and to hope and to a future do you want to literally have your life changed today you can do it right here but I also want to ask you Christian do you want God to use you to change the world That's what he's offering today. That's what this surrender is. Do you want to coast through your life as a Christian? Do you want to just go and float along as whatever happens? Do you just want to attend church every Sunday morning, maybe on Sunday night, maybe do the summer activities, maybe? Do you want to do those things? Or do you want to be a part of something that's literally going to change the world? The gospel of Jesus Christ will change the world. And he has called the church to do it. How would you like to be a part of a church that literally is going to change Lawton? Let me ask that again. (laughs) How many of you would like to be a part of a church that literally could change Lawton? And I'm not saying that you just come along for the ride, but I mean that you surrender over and you say, I want to be a part of that. I want to be involved in that. I want to see Lawton changed, turned upside down, if you will, or right side up. The world is in a mess, my friends. Lawton needs Jesus. And do you know how Lawton is going to get Jesus? By the church proclaiming the gospel. By going out and serving and changing people and encouraging people, loving on people. Do you want to just coast through your life for the rest of your life? Or do you want a chance to change the world? The last thing I want to share with you is this. Dwight L. Moody once said this. He said, the world has yet to see what God can do for, with and for and through and in and by the man who is fully and wholly consecrated to him. And he closed it with this. I will try my utmost to be that man. I, I, I believe this and I'll close it up. I believe the Lawton I believe our community and the communities around us. I truly believe that they have yet to see what God could do with, for, through, and in a church, a people who are totally consecrated to him. Lawton has never seen that. Oh, what imagine, imagine what could happen if Lawton could see that. And imagine if First Baptist West was that church, wholly committed to him, saying, God, we don't care what it costs. We don't care what you call us to do. God, here we are. We want to serve you. We want to reach people for Jesus. Use us, Lord. Here we are. We will do our utmost to be those people. We will do our utmost to be that church. Here we are, Lord. All God is waiting on, listen, all God is waiting on is for us to say, here's your servant, speak. Speak. 
What we're going to find out when we do it is God's probably been speaking a lot. We just haven't been listening. Can I close with this? God is still in the calling business. It's time for the church to get back into the answering business. And let it begin right here. I'd like everybody to bow your head as we step into this time now. Folks, this is the invitation time. This is the response time. This is the time for us to say, here we are, Lord. So I want to ask you, if you're here this morning or you're listening this morning, has there ever been a point in your life that you gave your heart to Jesus Christ? I don't mean that you surrendered to a cause. I don't mean that you surrendered uh, to, to a, 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 a doctrine, that you surrendered to a church. or you surrendered, But have you surrendered to Jesus? No more games. No more playing around. Have you given your heart to Jesus? I believe he's speaking to somebody right now. I'm going to ask you, would you just listen to me? No more games. No more disappointments. Would you listen to me? And if you're here or you're watching and you need to make that decision, would you make it right now? You don't need me. You don't need to answer to my call. But would you listen to him? Maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but man, I want to totally give it over to him. That doesn't mean you're going to go be a called a missionary in the deepest, darkest areas of the world. It just means that you're going to be a missionary right here where you are when you go to work tomorrow. When you go home today as a mom, a dad, a boy, and a girl, you, you, you could surrender and say, I won't be a missionary in my home. But I want to be a part of the church, and I want I want to see the church make a difference in our community and the communities around us. But I don't want to just sit and watch it. I want to be a part of it. Would you call him, come this morning? Just surrendering over to him, would you do it this morning? Let us be those people. Father, as we step into this invitation time now, Lord, I, I just pray that you would you would speak, and that we would listen. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask you to stand.